Hi there and welcome back once again. And thank you for being here and being such a great proactive parent and doing all you can to help your child live to their full potential because we know that children on the autism spectrum can live better lives than many are living today. When my son was diagnosed with autism, I was told we should drug him and try behavioral therapies and there really wasn't much we could do. But fortunately, I forged ahead and knew that there were things that I could do for him. And it's a big fast forward. And I know many of you have heard my story, but today my son no longer has his symptoms of autism. And so now I'm here to share these resources with you to help your child live a better life. Because I know like you as a parent, you're struggling to help them in any way you can and to provide the, and I want to provide the resources that can help you get, get your child to that level of recovery that they deserve. And uh, one of the things that's really, really beneficial, along with, of course, healing the biology and the toxic you know, load that we work with, et cetera, and uh, is helping them socialize and helping them be healthy physically. And one of the things that I actually did with my own son and found it extremely beneficial, uh, as many others have, has been martial arts. And today we are fortunate to have Al Lauren with us. He is a sensei who has just released a new book called Martial Arts on the Autism Spectrum. And I'm going to let Al go ahead and let you, you know, fill us in on, I know that you're very qualified to write this book and you have had so much experience working with, with children on the autism spectrum all the way up from childhood to adulthood. And also knowing that um, you know studies do show the benefits of martial arts. One thing that I do know um, that is really helpful, I think, for kids on the autism spectrum too, is that they have the ability to work in a group setting, but they don't have to rely on everybody around them like they do on a soccer team or the team doesn't. It's sort of individualized, but it's also very much about motor and planning skills, which are tremendously wonderful for the brain and their socialization being in a group environment. But Al, you also have in over 30 years, you taught over 300,000 classes, which is really amazing. In 1986, you were the national champion in karate. And uh, and I'll, I'll link to Al's um, resources uh, and how you can reach him as well on the show notes today. But uh, Al also has a, has a practice where he teaches in Marin County and San Francisco, California, just in case you're wondering where he's located. But today we're talking about the celebration and release of his new book. So welcome, Al. I can't wait to hear all about Thank it. You. Pleasure to be here, Karen. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, my book was released uh, recently uh, this year in March, and it's been a, uh, oh, a project that's been going on with me that I've wanted to do for uh, probably the last 10, 10 or so years. And I really got motivated during COVID when I had a lot of downtime on my hands and to, uh, to see this project through. Um, I'm a martial artist. I'm not an author by trade, but I did have something I felt very powerful to say about all my experiences and especially in the, uh, demographic of working with kids, teens, and adults with autism, and also other um, neurodivergent uh, issues as well, conditions. And um, I, I decided that um, I started writing the book about, oh, about five or six years ago, and uh, took a little break. And then I said, oh, I've just got to get this done. And uh, the reason I wrote the book is because I've worked, I've taught thousands of classes in the, in this demographic under uh, the autism, shall we say autism umbrella. And I've had many, many students, hundreds and hundreds of students. And I probably taught between um, well, several thousand classes in, I'm also mainstream, I teach martial arts, but in this, this is my passion, uh, working in the autism area and teaching. And I found, I've been doing it for over 30 years and um, teaching uh, to people with autism and um, like I said, other conditions related. Um, and so I felt like I had a lot to say and um, I started jotting it down, writing it down, and um, here we are with with a book. And um, let's see, 
I've, uh, I'm really excited about the book. It tells about the book, uh, tells about my methods that I use that I've found successful, my experiences, um, some not so successful, but many are successful. And um, I just really have enjoyed the process of writing this book and uh, now being able to speak about it. And it, it talks about my interaction and the students' interactions with, um, with the aspects of martial arts that are beneficial to them. I've been able to tailor my training and teaching in order to capture this audience and to have it be effective for them. Um, I have several or more um, vehicles that I use or tools. And um, so I'll go into that a little bit. What I've really found that um, I, I've really found out in the last 30 years um, <laughs> during doing this teaching that I'm a very patient person. And um, <laughs> patience and um, is really, really uh, important in working with uh, the kids, teens, and young adults. Um, I seem to connect to them for whatever reason. I kind of feel them. I, you know, not everybody. I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm a little bit of the uh, martial arts sensei autism whisperer, I would say, just because I connect and I I get really good feedback from family, schools, centers, and everywhere that I teach at that um, I, I'm working in this uh, in this category, in this area. We um, need more people like you, that's for sure. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so, it, so what I'm saying is it comes natural to me, but the components or characteristics that I, um, that I really lean on is patience, compassion, kindness, which is, you know, an offshoot of compassion, um, creativity, being able to, uh, to, to really know the energy and the chemistry of my class, which can change, or, and I do a lot of private one-on-one -on -one as well, um, knowing in that moment that, okay, I need to uh, uh, move a little bit to the left, to the right, to tack a little bit, and being very sensitive to, as if it's a class collectively, to the group of the class, and uh, being able to uh, navigate that way. Um, on a moment's notice spontaneously. And I found that very, very helpful. And I feel like um, I have a, a softness within me that the, that the people can, that I really try to project that my students can pick up on so they know that I'm safe. Mm -hmm. And when they know that I'm safe, they are willing to listen and give their a, a really good effort. And you know, I've I've had classes where I've had kids and teens have tantrums and all that. And you know, it's it can be tough to bring them out of that uh, that moment. But for the most part, um, I really want them to know that I'm a mentor and that I'm safe. And I genuinely, sincerely, all my attention is devoted to them during that teaching time. And that I truly, truly care. I mean, this is my livelihood, and um, I do get paid to teach my classes at schools and centers and my families that I work with, the privates that I go to their homes and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. But it's, you know, I have a, I, I'm well-educated. I have a degree. I could be, you know, in the tech field or something. This is what I, I've been really blessed and fortunate to be able to do this for the last 32 years and to earn a living at it and, um, and now, you know, have a, a full practice. So um, my book talks about that. It talks about, about my background, my education. I was educated in uh, my degree is not related to this. It's I have a Bachelor of Arts in uh, from the American University in Washington, D.C. in the School of International Service. So I guess I'm for the whole world, I guess you could say. But, it, you know, I'm, I mean, most people went into foreign diplomacy, uh, uh, foreign service. So, um, you know, I went into working with uh, all different types of personalities. And uh, it's been, I, I can't even tell you how rewarding it's been for me, uh, 
You know, I mean, uh, somebody asked me and, you know, everybody's got their beliefs and views about, um, you know, the world and their philosophies and their religions and everything. Somebody just, uh, for some reason, the other day, something came up about, uh, well, what would you like to be if you came back and you were reincarnated? And you know what I said? I mean, if there's such thing as reincarnation, I would like to come back as me. Oh, because I get to work. Everybody with, should say or want to say. Well, is either that or a hummingbird? Because I love hummingbirds. <laughs> oh, I love no, hummingbirds. I, 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 on top of the list was me. And not that I'm so great or anything, but I'm really content and feel really fortunate to work with this demographic and to be successful at it. And, um, you know, to be invited by teachers and schools and get referrals from doctors and occupational therapists and physical therapists and families that refer me to other families. And, you know, it's just a whole pipeline. And I, you know, that means a, a great deal to me because um, that means my work is being effective and it's making a difference. And that's what I'm here to do is to make a difference. Yes, I have to make a living and, you know, pay the mortgage and food on the table like everybody else. But, you know, for me, it's so much deeply a lot more than that. And well, that's money what, well that's, spent. That's oh, thank you. And, and that's what, at how they spend their money. And that's what my book's about. But I talk about the socialization, you know, yeah. of how it's good for the kids to collectively, like I have one school that I teach at and, you know, the kids support each other. They have, they all have their own individual needs and personalities and, um, and, and, and you know, personalities. However, they're always cheering and I really uh, support that and they feel comfortable with the people. And if they don't, we work on that too. And there are, of course, times, you know, uh, what is perfection, you know, in this area or in any area? It's making adjustments to make the situation the best that you can make it in the in the moment that you're uh, dealing with that situation. So um, I'm really good at that. I'm I'm good at I'm very sensitive to their needs and um, and you know I have help in my classes. If I have a class of ten or twelve kids, um, you know I have an assistant or two that can help me out because if you've met, you know each personality can be very different. And so my book talks all about my teaching, my background, uh, the methods that I use. And as I said, a lot of patience, a lot of compassion, a lot of knowledge. I've been training martial arts um, for well over 40 years, but I, yes, it, that doesn't, that's not as important, the skill level, although it certainly is an asset as much as, um, knowing how to work with the people. And so how did you get started in working with children on the autism spectrum? Because I know you have a karate martial arts uh, background, but uh, then how did the whole, you know, how did, you know, working with so many children on the autism spectrum come to be? Well, I, I started my business full-time in 1991. Yeah, almost when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth at this point, it feels like, <laughs> but uh, uh I was teaching at my studio and one of my students' moms was an occupational therapist and she was working with two boys who were nine years old. And this is um, just about 30 years ago. Uh, she was work working with these two boys and she called me up one day and she said, would you, Al, would you be interested in working with two boys who um, are on the spectrum? And I don't even know if she said on the spectrum, that wasn't even a you know, a buzzword back then. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even remember exactly what she said, how she uh, categorized that. But I said, yeah, absolutely. And so I started working with these two boys that were nine years old, privately, or both two on one, both, both of them. And I go, this is very, very interesting, very, very cool, very, very rewarding. And it just kind of mushroomed up, expanded out from there. Um, in fact, the the boy, uh, a little quick uh, footnote, the, the boy who's nine years old, John, is one of them. The other one is Julian. John is now 39 years old. And I just, I just saw him this morning. I, he's my longest standing student. I've been working with him for 30 years. He's 39 years old now. Wow. And I just had a, a private session with him this morning. And he's doing great. He's now independent living um, in a place that, here in Marin County, uh, California, that's called uh, Lifehouse that provides 
independent living with supervision and he's doing great. He's got a job. He cooks his own food. He writes his own check. He does the chores there. I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined that he would be in this place now. And he's a good martial artist. He is actually a black belt with me. He went up through the ranks, yellow belt, blue belt, green belt, purple belt, three degrees of brown belt, black belt. And, you know, he's he's very gentle and very easy, very internal, very easygoing. But and then um, from there, you know, parents started to talk. I got hired at um, a couple of schools that cater to this uh, demographic. And um, that gave me a lot more credibility. And um, it just, I don't know, all of a sudden here, 32 years later, uh, here I are 30 years later, here I am with a full practice of not only um, working on the spectrum, but mainstream and, you know, just, uh, you know, I'm go, go, go all the time. So um, a couple ahead. things that I'd like to like for you to cover are I know that there are literally studies out about martial arts having benefits for uh, social engagement also, uh, but as well as the brain's planning centers and certain things like that. So you can maybe speak to the benefits that like that you know of that are literally happening for the children. But then I would love some kind of before or after, you know, kinds of situations where you have seen these kids who come in probably with really high anxiety and, and you know, you know, more social problems and issues. And, you know, they maybe can barely be in the classroom at all right. because a lot of parents are dealing with this right now. Maybe right. kind of a little bit of the transition of how you work with them. And then now, of course, this one boy, 30 years later at 39 years old, what was he like at nine years old versus what he's like at 39? And that, that you know, kind of that transformation. Can you speak to that a little bit so we can kind of get a gist from the inside? Yeah, well, speaking of my student, John, who's been with me for 30 years, he his he's always been very, very subdued and quiet. He He's, you know, he suffers... He internalizes his anxiety and um, he, but he's come such a long way. I mean, there were, I have him now doing Karen and uh, audience doing spinning back fists, spinning back heel kicks. And he, for the longest time, resisted all of that and said, I, I just can't do it. I won't do it. Um, now I have him doing jump kicks, which he again resisted for many, many years. And I would say, I, would, I wouldn't, I would suggest it to him, expose it to him, show it to him visually or physically, I would do it. And um, just planting seeds and nurturing them over a period of time. And um, eventually he just opened up. And now this morning I had him throwing spinning back this, spinning elbows, spinning back heel kicks, roundhouse kicks, front jump kicks, jumping knees. And um, even 10 years ago, I never would have envisioned that he'd be doing that. So he's really just evolved as a person. And, you know, and I, I know how to work with him because I know him so well. He's like an extended family member being with me for that long. However, each person I really believe has their own time frame, And we want to plan, we want to plant seeds, nurture them, suggest and see how they respond. And again, myself, one of the uh, qualities that I use is the sensitivity of seeing how they respond to know whether to open a little bit more, to push a little bit more. I don't even know if I like that word push, right, but push um, can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because put to, to encourage a little bit more or to back off on the encouragement and just, I found that everyone has their time frame. And the thing is to expose them to that and to let them know that it's safe and when you're ready and I will be there to present it and little tidbits of presentation to see how they're doing, to see if they're opening up a little bit more, their mind, their body, their expression. Some And many do, some don't, you know, it just, um, it, again, it's a very individual thing. But the martial arts is excellent for that. And I, I really try emphasize doing, even in my classes, I'll have the kids sit for a little bit and I'll work with, um, that's why I don't take too big of a class, you know, 10 at most. And even, I prefer even less 
um, just so I can really individualize my work. And I almost always have in in a, a class that's maybe five or six uh, and above, I always have an assistant just to help uh, help with the pads and the equipment or whatever we're using and just to, um, to work with me and, and follow my lead. Um, martial arts is be to me is beyond wonderful for this demographic if you can find the right program beyond wonderful because a lot of the kids are, are not really interested in doing anything um physical they want to do you know their their games their computers the tv um more digital and so i have this rule that i spoke about in my book called the one hour rule. If you're doing one hour on TV, you want to move your, and I know this sounds like a big deal, and it kind of is, you want to move your body, go out and get some fresh air, walk, do something where you're away from all the uh, all the TV and laptops and et cetera, et cetera, for, for a period of time. So try, try to balance that out. But getting back to martial arts, I make sure that my students get exercise which is so good for the brain, the body, the emotions. Um, and being that it's martial arts, it's, not, it's, it's fitness and it's way more than fitness because you're using the whole brain. And I have a method that I use that I really give a certain type of specific instruction so they have to concentrate even if they're not concentrating. And I've heard so many times, oh, Sensei Al, I've lost my concentration. And I said, that's okay. I said, we're going to bring it back right away. We're going to, and this is what we're going to do. And, um, and so I have methods that I use to, and visuals as well, not mm -hmm. only instructional because some people are, you know, visual and other people are, are more instructional and it just, just depends on who we're working with. And so it, it the martial arts, it, it, it blends coordination, agility, and I'm not asking anybody to be the next Jackie Chan or anything like that, just following. And I know how to, each person, once I get a feel for their personality, even a new student, doesn't take me too long to size them up. I know what moves they're going to feel comfortable doing and what moves they're not going to feel. So they feel um, inspired and have a reference point of success and encouragement without without overdoing the encouragement you know i don't want him to say oh he's saying that all the time it, uh, yeah it just it, you know it's like brush your teeth after that i uh, no, the right amount of encouragement for the right personality and for some reason um i'm able to size up uh, or sense that and you know this is and I, uh, and as i've said before uh, or I said to you, I said earlier, I found my calling. This is, you know, uh, I'm not a techie person. I mean, I could do it if I had to. I can learn, you, you know, that's that that doesn't resonate with me. That doesn't come natural to me. This comes natural to me. So the martial arts, the exercise, the gross and fine motor skill utilization is so important. Like I have, um, like John, this morning, I have him doing this um series of blocks where he goes lift block cross block down block with the same hand then immediately slips uh switch to the other lift block cross block and he's you get into a rhythm where the brain gets locked into the body and it's a coordination and an agility and i i'm amazed that i have a lot of students that can really do this and they love it because it really takes all their their internal concentration and energy into movement and um and they feel great they 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 request it you know something like that and just to um i have a girl that i worked with the other day who has um crater willie and um it's and you know she's got autism also but um a little bit different and you know i've got her now doing which i never would have fathomed in my wildest dream i've got her doing roundhouse kicks she moves very slowly but her form is amazing she's really form oriented and she's pretty verbal when she wants to talk and so she lets me know uh now she she i work with her privately she doesn't let me <laughs> 
She doesn't let me leave her house. She goes, can we do this? Can we do a hammer fist? Can we do a cross elbow? Can we do a, uh, a, a an outside chop? And and it, it, it's incredible. I I mean, I charge her for my, my fees for one hour. I spend two hours there the other day just because, you know, how could I say no to her? Yeah. And she was so, so, so enthusiastic. So, um, and you don't I see hope. that kind of enthusiasm from them from, you know, unless there's something they're obsessive about, but it's not always a positive thing like this. Like, obviously, she's enjoying it. They're really yes. good at those rhythmic movements and being given something that is specific to do. Then they know this is exactly what you do. And then if you repeat it and then they get better at it, it builds their self-confidence in some right. of these methods that you're talking about. Um, do you mention those or do you go into those in the book, too? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Uh, there's, there's, yeah. there's a, it, it's an easy read, but there's a lot of meat on the bones. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's not, there's, I would say very little or no, no fluff whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's all like, you know, um, I guess the nuts and bolts of the teaching and who I am and why I am um, in this industry and why I've been successful in doing what I do and the reasons why it's so beneficial to people who who are on the spe spectrum who practice martial arts. And like I said, fitness, concentration, socialization, opening up the energy gates in the body so they feel more, more alive, getting the endorphins going. Now, you asked me, Karen, how do I work with really anxious students? Um, a lot that... That if I had the total answer for that, I would, uh, you know, I would, I would can it and coin it. But um, I, I really do my best to give them to let them know who I am. That I'm again safe, that they can be comfortable and be who they, who they are with me, and give them like some slack to express themselves. So I'm not saying putting them in a box whatsoever. Of course, they have to have some discipline if it's in a class, but if it's one-on-one, -on -one, they have a little bit more slack to, to you know, express their anxiety. And, um, and you know, and then I, I say, okay, I understand that and I know how you feel. And um, we're, if you will, we're still gonna do some movements. And I have a lot of um, equipment that I bring that they find fascinating. Many of the students find it fascinating. My pads, my hand pads, my kicking pads. I have all kinds of very interesting martial arts equipment that really gets their attention. And so now are we going to use this? Oh, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. So when they see me come in with all this, my bag and carrying all this equipment and I'll take some things out of my bag, I, I know how to capture their attention. And then many times I have them, uh, have them with me on the same page so um but you know i i've been kicked spit on scratched mm -hmm. hit sworn at you know i i've gone through the uh, i've run the gamut yeah I, as i said to uh i work with this organization out here this wonderful organization organization called project awareness and special sports and they do provide sports for um kids up to, I think, 21, you know, soccer and um, uh, basketball and lacrosse and many, many volunteers. And, you know, we have a martial arts program, which through them has been very successful. And um, is so, this all for kids with special needs? Or yes, all, all for kids with special needs. Okay. Yeah, it's, they have hip hop and yoga and, I mean, incredible um, array of programs. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been very fortunate to be linked with them. They've been very, very supportive of my work and they've really helped to put it out in the community, my teaching and in classes. And um, that's another avenue that I've, uh, you know, has helped me to build my practice in this area. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've, uh, and, I've I've been around the block a few times with uh, <laughs> with my experience, and, and it's in the book too. And, and you know, and, and and I say not everything that I do has been successful. I'm, I'm being real, but for the majority and the feedback and the um, 
Well, my book opens up with the as you open it up, it opens up with um, testimonials from my clients, written testimonials from my clients here in Mill Valley, California, San Rafael, California. Um, and many are very, you know, from everyone from doctors and therapists and just people that I've worked with for a long time and th their kids who are now, many of them are, who are now adults. And they, I have about, I don't know, 12 to 14 pretty lengthy testimonials of how it's benefited their, um, their family, not only uh, the kids, but the family as well. Right. So, you know, it carry, carries over, and as you know, be, mm -hmm. it carries over into the family. And um, yeah, it, it, if you have an opportunity, it's a very unique book. Like I said, I'm not an author by trade. I'm a martial artist and a Tai Chi practitioner and teacher. However, I had a lot to say teaching many thousands of classes and hundreds and hundreds of students uh, on the spectrum umbrella, under the spectrum umbrella. So Al, I'm wondering um, for referrals, for because not everybody's in California or near you. So if a parent wanted to find someone like you, which I think your book sounds like a tremendous resource for all educators and other people who work with children on the autism spectrum, no matter what they're doing, for you know a parent to share with people who work with their children. But I'm wondering if you have uh, additional resources, a, a kind of a global one, or at least something within the United States where people could find someone that is similar to you or does the work that you do with these children in physical fitness, like you had said, this other program with special needs. So do you have any referral base uh, by chance? Well, what I tell parents and people is in different geographic locations is to, because there, there's so many places, martial arts is so widespread. Yeah. And when I Google to see what other people are doing, other instructors, you know, nationally and internationally, I see a lot of programs and I'll Google martial arts, you know, on the autism spectrum, almost like the title of my book or work in teaching martial arts to the autism population. And what I suggest, I don't, you know, I mean, if you're in Chicago, you're in Chicago. If you're in, you know, LA or, um, you know, Des Moines, you want to find um, if there's someone working there or a school, a dojo that's teaching that has experience. And what I tell people is the most important thing is the sensitivity and of the person the to be door. able to work. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've seen some of the greatest martial artists and, and I wouldn't send anybody to them because, you know, they just don't have that awareness, the sensitivity, the ability to, to connect with their students and to feel the um, chemistry of what they're doing in the room. So I tell parents, if you find a school that is promoting working with, and, and it's really common now because, you know, autism is so diagnosed, it's everywhere, mm -hmm. um, that go and sit in, interview the the, um, the the teacher, the sensei, sit in on a class, see how he or she works or how they work and um, make a, then you'll have a much better feel. And, and if, if you feel any red flags, for whatever reason, it could be they came in five minutes late or, you know, professionalism is at the top of my level. If somebody's in some way, that means being punctual, being respectful, looking the people in the eye, um, knowledgeable, sensitive, listening, all those skills, especially working in this demographic. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the key skills, I think, when you're seeking out anything, anybody who's going to work with your child, especially your yeah. sensitive child with autism. But, you know, yes. Teachers, Absolutely. medical practitioners, therapists, of all kinds, everybody that should be, you know, parents should, should, you know, they are their child's advocate. Don't be afraid to go out there and interview the people who might, 
you might hire to work with your child. Even if that's a doctor, you're hiring them or, or a therapist. You want to make sure that you have a good resonance for that person. I always say, use your gut instinct. You, you know, go, go, don't be afraid to ask them questions and, and see what, how they answer and, and their personality. And if you feel that they could resonate with your child as well, because as you're saying, Al, a lot of people might be wonderful in what they do but they're not that great with people, oh, you know, especially a special needs child who might get, you know, anxious on them. Can they, can they, do they have patience? Could they handle that? Do they know what to do? Do they have any experience? All of these are good questions to ask. Yeah. And, and also I tell them, check their references. Yes. Speak to other, speak to other parents who have worked with the, the uh, potential prospective teacher check the references, see what they say, because that's really, and, and like you said, absolutely with your doctor, your, your therapist, I mean, those, the, that's very important. So yeah, check the references, see what, see, see, that's why um, I get a lot of references because people know who I am and know that I am capable. And that's the kind of person you want. Right. And, you know, I, I wish I could divide myself in, you know, quarters so I could go here, there and everywhere, uh, you know, at the same time, but I can't. So, you know, you want to check the references and get a really interview them, get it like you said, Karen, get a really good feel for, um, you know, this, this, yeah, super important. They're, you know, this is our son or daughter. I mean, this is our family. And, and teachers um, have, and therapists and doctors, they have a big impact. I mean, we can all remember a teacher that said something negative to us when we were a young child and how it may have impacted us and a very positive, great teacher that we loved and the positive impact they may have had. These are, you know, they, they really make a difference that can stick with you. So you want it to be a positive one. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a, um, a t teacher of my teacher when I was living in Florida before I moved to California and he was a renowned martial arts uh, sensei, and he was internationally known. And um, I had him sign a book for uh, a book that we were all um, using that had forms and everything. And he wrote on it, and this is in the in 1980s. I don't know, remember uh, when it was exactly, mid 80s probably. And he wrote, practice, practice, practice. The way will show itself is what he said to me. And I'm going like, I thought he was going to write, hey, Al, you're a wonderful martial art or something like that. And it was like, you know, I, I kind of deflated. And but I it always stuck with me. And I just kept practicing. And you know, the way it did show itself. So like what you're saying, exactly, you know, spot on what you're saying. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. I just kept training, training, training. I had no idea I'd be doing this for my livelihood. Um, you know, it just it showed up. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. And, you know, some people know and some people don't know. And, you know, I found out when I found out in, uh, in 1991 and haven't looked back since. So, yeah, no, it, it sticks with people, what pe teachers say and yeah. how they conduct themselves. Well, Al, thank you again so much for being here today. So everybody you're listening to, Al Lauren, the name of the book is Martial Arts on the Autism Spectrum. And Al, what is a website, a resource, how people can find you? It's um, my first and last. It's Al Lauren, A-L-L-O-R-E-N, martialarts.com. And my book is actually already a bestseller on Amazon in three categories. So you can find my book on Amazon. Just either Google my name or Al Lauren Martial Arts. L-O-R-E-N is the last name. And um, you'll find it. It'll come up. and. Uh, yeah. All right. Great. And I will also link to it in the show notes for you as well. So that uh, uh, for our listeners to be able to easily find it too, because some people might be driving their car right now or not, don't have a pen and paper on their run or yeah. something. So uh, I'll make sure I'll add it into the show notes for you. Oh, okay, great. All yeah. right. All right. Well, thank you all for, for being here today, sharing with us, uh, for writing this tremendous book that I think sounds like a wonderful resource for a lot of educators of all fields to uh, utilize from the, the, the skills that you're able to share 
to help work with sensitive children on the autism spectrum and their 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 special needs and making sure that you know they are cared for the, the way they should be and it, and that we all always in, make them feel included and show them positivity uh, and build their self-esteem because those things are really important um, because they they sometimes don't always feel like they fit in or or know who they are. Not that anybody really does, but <laughs> it's always helpful to have additional um, skills. So your book and uh, your resources, I think, should be very helpful. So again, thank you. And thank you for you know working with all of these children and making such a positive impact in their lives. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. Appreciate it's my it. pleasure. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah.